This video will introduce free energies. They are different than the ordinary total energy of a system. And we want to explain how you can do thermodynamics for systems that are not isolated. For an isolated gas or liquid system, we have seen that we start from the entropy S as a function of U, N and V, total energy, particle number and volume. And we can obtain other variables such as the temperature T, the pressure P and the chemical potential mu as partial derivatives of this function. Instead of the entropy, you can also use the energy as a function of S, V and N, as a function of the entropy, volume and particle number. And we have derived the differential form of the first law of thermodynamics from these partial derivatives of S. And it turns out that this law is given as TDU is TDS minus PDV plus mu dN, where TDS represents the heat and it's equal to the heat only for quasi-static processes. It may be that TDS is larger than the Q in the case there are spontaneous processes. From this law we immediately find that the temperature is given as the partial derivative of U with respect to S, pressure as U with respect to V, and mu as the derivative of U with respect to N. We see that there are some parameters which control the problem. In this case, those are S, the V, and the N. And there are some other thermodynamic variables which can then assume any value. And of course, in equilibrium, they will assume the value which maximizes the entropy. And that's the way we found these unknown variables, T, P, and mu. Another thing which is interesting to note is that the parameters S, V and N, those are the ones that we fix in this case for an isolated system, they are extensive. What does that mean? If we double the size of the system, then the S goes to 2S, V will become 2v and n will become 2n. It's the opposite with these variables, t, p and mu. If we make a box twice as big, and it's the same box, so this, we have the same system in, in the box, then obviously the temperature doesn't double. All these quantities for the pressure and for the chemical potential, the same holes, they are intensive, which means that they are independent of the size of the system. So if we take two systems, we join them, then the total entropy is the double of the original entropy, but the temperature remains the same, the pressure remains the same and the chemical potential remains the same. And in this case, we have we start from U, which is given in terms of these extensive variables S, V and N, and we obtain the intensive variables T, P and Mu as partial derivatives of the U with respect to the extensive variables. You see that if we double the system, U doubles, but also S doubles, and so you see that nothing happens to T. And it's the same with P. If U doubles and V doubles, then P remains the same. And here it's the same. U and N would double both if we take two systems and combine them. But the mu does not change. Now consider the situation where we do not control the S, V and N, but we would fix the T, N and V rather than the S, the N and the V. Could we then find a an energy, U, as a function of T and N and V, such that the partial derivative of U with respect to T would give us S. It turns out that that is not possible.
after all, the t is found from this formula, and it's obviously a function which depends on s, n, and v, and therefore the t is not an independent variable from n and v. Alternatively, we can look at this equation for u, which clearly shows that the independent variables are s, v, and n. t is a derivative of u, and it's not clear how we can write u as a function of independent variables involving its own derivative. So would there perhaps be another function, which is not u, but some other thermodynamic potential, as we call it, which is a function of the independent variables t, n, and v, which can be written as a function of independent variables t, n, and v. Obviously, in our quest for this function, we should start from the du, given here in terms of the ds, the dv, and the dn. And we want to replace this t ds by something like s dt. That would be much better. And to, for that purpose, we look at d of t s, which, according to the product rule, can be written as t ds plus s dt. So if we subtract this t s from u, then we cancel this term here, and we are left with the term s dt. We therefore have good hopes that the function f is defined as u minus t s will do the job. And in order to verify this, let's calculate df. And that consists first of du, which we have from above. So that's t ds minus pdv plus mu dn. And then we subtract tds coming from this second term, and minus s dt. Now we see indeed, as anticipated, that these two terms cancel. And we are left with df is given by minus s dt minus p dv plus mu dn. This result shows that f can indeed clearly be written as a function of the independent variables t, v, and n, and we can obtain s, p, and mu as partial derivatives. First of all, minus s is given as df dt at constant particle number and volume minus p is given as df dv at constant particle number and temperature and finally, mu is given as df dn at constant temperature and volume. The function f that we have found, which is given as u minus ts, is the Helmholtz free energy. And just like the energy in an isolated system, it serves as a kind of Rosetta stone. It gives us all the unknowns. If we have f as a function of t, v, and n, we can obtain the other three thermodynamic variables, s, p, and mu. We have successfully constructed a function, the Helmholtz free energy, which is a function of three independent variables, t, v, and n, and taking partial derivatives of this function gives us the s, the p, and the mu. Now we try to do the same, but then for a different z set of variables, t, p, and n, which means that we trade in now the volume for the pressure. In fact, here we are not happy with the fact that we have v as an independent variable and not the p. And in order to find a solution, we do the same as before. We look at the d 
of p times v and the product rule tells us that this is p dv plus v dp and if we add that to this expression then we trade in this term minus p dv for our term v dp so we look at a function g which is f plus pv and then we have dg is this df that we had up there minus s dt minus p dv plus mu dn and then we have a plus p dv plus vdp and we see that now this term here cancels against this one and we are left with minus s dd plus v dp plus mu dn so we have obtained what we wanted we have obtained a function g it's called the gibbs free energy and it's an independent function of the parameters t p and n and we can obtain the s the v and the mu as partial derivatives here we do that so from this equation we directly have that minus s is dg dt v is dg dp and mu is dg dn g is the gibbs free energy which describes a system at constant temperature constant pressure and with a fixed number of particles n so we have two free energies the gibbs free energy and the helmholtz free energy usually when people just speak of the free energy they mean the helmholtz free energy recall that in order to remove the s as an independent variable and replace it by the t we have added a term ts to the u and then in order to get to g we have added a term pv to the free energy which was u minus ts so let's now look at what we obtain when we take the u and add a term pv that is called h and the name for h is the enthalpy so let us look what dh gives us dh is du first of all so we have tds minus pdv plus mu dn and the differential of p times v gives us plus p dv plus v dp and we see just as before that these two terms cancel and we are left with TDS plus VDP plus mu dn so that means that H is a function which depends on the independent variables S P and N and this is relevant for reactor vessels in which processes take to take place quite quickly so that the heat exchange can be neglected with to the air and the pressure is given by the atmospheric pressure let us consider again the free energy the Helmholtz free energy which is given as a function of T and V and we had seen that the entropy can be obtained as minus s equals df dt at constant n and v now we address the question whether it's possible to find u from this expression of f 
After all, we know how to find the entropy, but how can we find u? Well, f is related to u by the definition f is u minus ts. And s is given here, so we have u equals f plus ts. And that is f minus t times df dt evaluated at constant n and v. Let us summarize what we have done. In this table you find in the left column the system parameters. Those are the parameters that can be controlled, for example, in an experiment. Then in the second column you find the name of the corresponding thermodynamic potential, which for an isolated system with control by S and V is the energy, the Helmholtz free energy for a TV system, uh, the Gibbs free energy for a TP system, and the enthalpy for an SNP system. These are the corresponding formulas for the thermodynamic potentials, and then on the right-hand side you see how you can find all the other parameters, those that are not controlled, as partial derivatives of the thermodynamic potentials with respect to each of the control parameters.